What's going on guys? So today's video is going to be pretty interesting. In front of us, you're looking at the 14 foot Texas Pride low boy trailer that we have. This thing was overbuilt for us, like insanely overbuilt because even the low boy deck probably sits about four inches taller than most of them, mainly because we're running 8,000 pound axles. We're running H rated tires. We have no dovetail on the back and this thing is built on two eight inch C channel frames stacked. This thing is one absolutely heavy duty beast. And today's job, today's mission, today's goal is to make it a little easier to use. So we got these folding ramps on the back. And if you look closely at them, they are built significantly well. These things are super, super, super heavy, super robust, and quite frankly, weigh a lot. Whenever you drop them down, there's kind of a process to do it so you don't throw your back out. And the process starts with pulling this pin right here which you push the ramp forward, pop this pin out, and then you have to pop this out first, actually, like that, and that allows this bottom part to swing. And then you pull this pin out, and this whole assembly kind of comes down, and this expands out from it. Um, it is not what I would consider to be, like, crazy, crazy heavy, but it is pretty dang heavy. Even the folks that help me occasionally um, when I'm loading equipment up, if I go to a rental equipment company, when they see this thing and they actually put it in place, they struggle with it because it's that heavy. That said, the folks over at eTrailer provided me this really, really cool product. It's called Gorilla Lift. This is the two-sided um, two assist. So basically, you can see from the picture here, you mount it to the top rail. In my case, I don't have you know, your typical, you know, angled steel. This is a fully boxed three inch tubular piece of steel. Um, and you mount it to the top rail here and it has a spring inside of there and it helps you lift up or lower your tailgate. So that's gonna be super, super cool. Um, I'm so excited to see how this works because quite frankly, the only thing that is difficult about this trailer is this piece right here. So hopefully we fix that today. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so before we kick off the actual install, I wanted to show you around the new building. So the building's been up now for a little while. Still have to uh, complete it with power and some other things, but right now I'm using one of my portable battery power stations right here. Keeps the fan running, keeps my batteries charged, keeps charging my Bluetooth speaker. And uh, yeah, it turned out well. We have all of our workbenches. We have three big workbenches right here that are gonna be going up. We have two cabinet storage over there. We have some really, really cool uh, shelving systems that'll be going up, four of those. On top of it, I have a workbench that's adjustable. Actually got all this stuff from Sam's Club. Super, super cool, super high quality stuff too. You can see I have my icy breeze over here as well. I've unloaded some of the stuff from some of my trailers, brought some of the bikes in, but the building is done. Even if, uh, I'm not sure if I've released all the videos on my other channel yet on the actual construction of the building, but this is what it looks like, and we're already starting to do some projects in here. Once I get power in here and I can run the refrigerator and some other things directly, that'll be really cool. But for now, this is, uh, this is where we're at, and we're doing a project in here, which is super cool. So we're gonna continue on with this thing. I gotta give a big shout out to my channel sponsor, eTrailer.com. Without them, this couldn't have been possible. I mean, they have been such a great supporter of my channel. E-Trailer is a phenomenal sponsor, phenomenal partner. They've done so much. They are an incredible company with amazing ethics. If you are looking for anything for your trailer, for your RV, um, for towing, for your vehicle, check them out first, e-trailer.com. Link in the description. I've also put my favorite things in the description of my video. So if you ever go to it, you'll see a link to my e-trailer page. You'll also see all the cool stuff that they sell and they are just an absolute wealth of knowledge and their customer service is fantastic. I can't say enough about them. Anyways, um, again, big shout out to them. Um, you might notice the big truck, big RV badge over there. That actually came off of the back of the dump trailer a long time ago. I had it in storage and it'll be going up here. But yeah, let's get this thing installed on the trailer. Also, again, came from my channel partners at eTrailer. Okay, so we have the box opened up. These rails already have the cables going through them. Of course, we're gonna follow the instructions on this thing because I don't wanna do this wrong. And there's gonna be quite a bit of tension on those, those springs that are inside of here. So I wanna be sure that I, uh, I follow it correctly. Gives you a equipment or parts list. I don't think it gives you any... Oh, yep, it does give you some pictures. Good. I always like looking at pictures because I think they give you a much better idea of 
how things are supposed to go. All right, let's get this laid out and uh, and we'll see what where things kind of go. Okay, so the plan was to get everything installed and then show you what was going on, but I had to change the plan a little bit. So we're following the instructions, but unfortunately I'm kind of hitting a dilemma here. And the problem is because this rail is enclosed and goes all the way back to this piece of tube, which is enclosed, I can't actually put a bolt through it and secure a nut to the other end of it. Um, so this top piece is a pretty thick plate. It could be up to like a quarter inch thick. I just know it's a very thick piece of steel. I could run a tap and simply thread the bolt into it to hold these in place, but that's not gonna make a lot of sense just because if you tighten it too much, you might strip these out because this, this steel is a little softer than the grade five steel that's used in bolt construction. And I wouldn't be able to put a plate on the back end of it or a nut and washer. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna try something kind of similar. A lot of folks would probably do kind of what we're doing and they'd say, well, just run a couple self tappers because the amount of force that's gonna be pulling on this may not be enough to pull a self tap up. That's what we're gonna try, but we're doing it a little bit different way here. So you can see the two holes that we drilled here. We're actually gonna use these galvanized uh, self tapping screws. They were actually leftover screws from the building of the building. And we're gonna put two of them in next to each other. So hopefully, that's gonna be enough to be able to withstand the upwards pressure of this cable whenever it's connected. Downward force isn't gonna be an issue. It's the upwards force that's gonna be an issue here. And I think that's gonna be fine because, you know, typically something like that can withstand, you know, probably several hundred pounds worth of force. And I don't think we're gonna be applying anywhere near that once these cables are up in the up position because you've actually relieved some of the pressure on this, on this spring and it's not pulling up nearly as hard as it would be if the, the gate was like halfway down. So hopefully this works. We've already pre-drilled our half inch holes for this piece right here. So what ends up happening is you put these on top, you drop these carriage bolts through, and that was the other thing we had to do different. I gotta find my carriage bolts. Let's see here. Okay, so the ones that come with it are two and a half inches long, and they're not long enough to go through this top rail on the trailer. So we got some four and a half inch bolts. My, my father stopped by the store and picked these up. And we're going to drop them in, and I know that these are much larger than the 5 16 inch bolts that are going to be going in, but the instructions say use half-inch holes or drill half-inch holes. So that's what we did, and part of the reason behind that is because you want to be able to move this a little bit to get it in place before you secure all this stuff. So that's going to make it a little bit easier to do that. Um, I still have the red paint that the folks at Texas Pride included with my trailer for touch-up paint. So we're gonna daub some red paint in these bare metal open holes just so we can keep them, you know, from rusting a little bit longer, you know what I mean? So that's kind of the goal. We're gonna drop all this in and then once we get everything installed, I'm gonna show you how we set it all up because there could be a lot of trial and error here and we wanna be sure that we get this installed correctly. Once it's installed, again, we'll come back and show you how we did it. Again, this is not gonna be installed correctly. This is not gonna be installed according to how they want you to install it because we don't have a way of installing it exactly like they want you to install it. So this is gonna be kind of the alternative to it and we'll constantly keep an eye on these things just to see if they're gonna start pulling out. We may actually try to put some anchors under here in the future just to see if we can, we can secure it to something that has a backer plate to spread out some of that force that's gonna be applied to it. But those should work, especially since we're using two of them. At least that's what the hope is. Um, again, we'll probably come up with a better solution for this down the road, but we're gonna see how it holds up for now. So we'll go ahead and get everything mounted, get the bolts in place and see how it works. Okay, so something to think about is once you have to put these two center carriage bolts in, um, once you get the first one, you're going to have to lift this whole assembly off, drop the bolts in, and then lower it down so the bolts go in place because there's no way to do it any other way. You basically have to move this off the channel, get your bolt in, drop that one down, and then you can put this one in because the end's open. But yeah, you're definitely going to want to kind of lift the assembly up, drop the bolt in, and then drop this whole rail down on top so the bolts fall through. All right, we're gonna tighten all this up and then we'll put the self tappers in at the end. Okay, so we ran into some problems. The first problem is that the bolts that came with it are a finer thread than the bolts that we got that were longer. So we couldn't use the much, much easier, where are they? Locking nuts that they included. These would have been really nice to use because they would have essentially just spun right on. Instead, we used washers with a nylon locking nuts, uh, which meant we had to essentially use a wrench and crank them all the way from the end to where it tightens up. Not a big deal, but we got that in place. 
that wasn't the big headache. The big headache was out here on the back where we use self tappers. So this steel right here is so thick that even though the self tapping bit punched through, it got caught. I know some people call them self drilling bits. That's probably more proper, but self drilling bit, it got caught um, right when it would go in and the heads would break off. Um, we were gonna put two over there. We ended up putting one in. I'll probably drill out the one that's there that, that broke off. We actually broke two of them off on that side. And then this side, we broke two of them off, um, but we got one to go in after we pre-drilled. And I really didn't want to pre-drill because when you use a self-cutting or self-tapping or self-drilling bit, the whole point is that the drilling and the, the teeth that it carves in to the metal acts as the, the grip. So when you pre-drill, you have to be very careful because you're not really getting as much bite as you would get if the thing drilled all the way in. So um, we, I used these as well, which are self-drilling screws, metal to metal, and these are high torque, and those also broke. So we went back to these galvanized. We were able to pre-drill and get one in here really tight. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some larger ones, and we're gonna drill out the two that broke, and then we'll essentially have three in once we get all three self-tapping screws to hold in place. So I think that's gonna be plenty of force. Now, the benefit here is you can see that there's no tension here. So the reality is it's not pulling up on this at all, at any point. The only force you have on this spring is when you start to lower the ramp. Now, this is not calibrated the way they want you to calibrate this. So don't look at what I did here and assume this is gonna work for everybody, but it works for my setup really well. The way this is supposed to work is that you're always supposed to have tension right here, and it's supposed to essentially make like a zero gravity door to where no matter where you stop it, that's gonna hold it in place. And you can see on the back, I got these large curl springs that are right there, and those curl springs are designed to give some support and, and essentially create that spring effect to give you an easier time putting them up. But right when you get about to, let's just say where this support is, it gets really, really heavy. And you're probably pushing with well over 100 pounds worth of force to try to get the gate up. Every single person who tries to push these up instantly when they get to that point struggle. So the cool thing is, is the way this is now designed, even though I have this, you know, very slack, when it gets to that point, it puts a tremendous amount of force on. So right around this point, there's a lot of force being applied to that cable. And it works really well. So I can now easily with one hand, which was not something I could do before, grab it and put it back up without any problem at all. So that is really cool. So it's doing exactly what I want it to do for me, which is to get past that break point to where I can actually put the tailgate or the gate of the trail back trailer back up and it's gonna work out perfect. And the side benefit of this is the fact that I'm not gonna have any tension or any force being pulled upon that, the, the self-tapping screws that are holding this in place. It, if anything, now it's shear force, which I have this, I have one here, a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt here that are preventing it from shearing. So I think we're in a good spot here, and I'm actually okay with having this slack like that. As you can see, we used a couple carabiners. Actually, I gotta find the, the piece on this one that came off but I have extra as well. I gotta use a carabiner um, to hold it to this handle so I didn't have to drill into the side because typically they want you to drill in this half inch bolt into the side and then attach this to that bolt. But as you can see, this welded piece of half inch steel actually is gonna be much stronger and it's gonna provide me exactly the, the mounting piece I need for this cable. But very cool, and honestly, it helps out tremendously. I'm super happy with it. Um, I might have to paint this thing red to match the trailer, but it doesn't look bad. I mean, what do you guys think? I know we had to do things differently because the way this trailer is designed didn't give us the ability to put a bolt all the way through here, but we compromised. And the good thing about the way that I needed help with this is this compromise actually benefits me. So I don't need this to be tight right here. And that's a really good thing for the setup we have. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. I'll put a link in the description if this is something you may want. Got it from my channel sponsor, eTrailer, so big shout out to them. They have amazing customer service, amazing support, and they're there to help you, and, and they absolutely help me anytime I need help. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you very soon.